is Chrissy and I'm going to be doing a reading today on um, a presidential candidate in Ecuador who was assassinated two weeks before the presidential election. He was gunned down and shot in the head. So take a moment, I'm gonna pull this clip up so you guys can see and get updated on what happened and then we'll talk about it. Presidential candidate Fernando Villavicencio was surrounded by bodyguards leaving a campaign event in Ecuador's capital as he was getting into a truck. You can hear the gunfire. He was shot in the head and killed just two weeks before the election. The lawmaker and former journalist was running on a pledge to root out corruption and organized crime, now terrorizing the streets. The president says assassins tossed a grenade as they escaped. At least six people are under arrest. Drug violence is skyrocketing in Ecuador, with gangs fighting over roots and turf. Via Vincencio promised to clean house. These are some of his last words at his final campaign event. What we need to do is to lock up the thieves, he said. All right, guys, so let's get into it. Um, what happened to Fernando was tragic. And I'm just wondering why his soul decided to go in that way. So you guys already know how we do it. Personality cards first. There they go. And um, we're basically going to get into it and, and see what this man is all about. I have no idea who he is. Fernando Villa Vicencio. And um, he was running to become president. Elections or in two weeks and he gets sh basically gunned down um, after meeting up with his his people he had a campaign and he was leaving the campaign um, and they, they shot and killed him so um, right now they're blaming it on gangs now I don't take everything for face value so I'll get into the reading and see if that is the case um, what they're saying was that Fernando was um, rallying to stop the gangs, stop gang violence, and stop the drugs from coming into Ecuador um, and being trafficked. So um, let's let's talk about it. Let's get into it. But first, let's see what kind of man this person was and get into the man. Um, behind this incident because um, out of respect let's let's honor who he who he was and who he is as a person right so let's see here um i'm gonna ask the ancestors to uh and i gotta move this because this chair keeps moving okay so we're gonna ask the ancestors to tell us about Fernando's personality. What kind of person was he? What kind of person was he? Tell us about him. Okay, again, I don't know anything about this man. I'm gonna pick three cards. They are going, ancestor spirit is gonna tell us about him. And we are gonna learn about him today, okay? This is the school of my goddess Chrissy, okay? So thank you, ancestors, for coming through. And thank you for blessing us with this reading. All right. Oh, wow. Okay, let's let's get into it. It says here, highlights the erotic energy of the feminine, opens your heart when your dependency is rejected. Oh, wow. So um, I get Fernando may have had many women or he knew how to be seductive with his personality. He knew how to, um, he basically had a lot of female fans. It was a lot of females that um, gravitated towards him because the message that he gave was more of a matriarchal message it was more 
sorry why did i say matriarchal oh my gosh okay that just is confirmation for me that it pulls a lot of the mothers out and agree with a lot of things that he was saying and because of that he they're saying that he had this natural energy to like kind of reel you in i wouldn't be surprised if he was like really good with the ladies as far as like relationships because this card is basically talking about like able to seduce you know what i mean but the shadow side is that inappropriate use of sensuality attachment to money and power so we don't know if that's the kind of person he was but we're gonna go further in the reading and we're gonna find out okay let's see next card saboteur wow highlights your fear of self-empowerment and the changes it would bring to your life shadow side of that is self-destructive behavior or the desire to undermine others okay so there were some shadow attributes that Fernando had that he needed to correct okay and that could be one of the reasons why this happened let's see let's go further into it rescuer rescuer we got provides strength and support to others in crisis acts out of love with no expectation of reward shadow side assumes that the rescued will reciprocate keeps the rescue one needy interesting so there may have been a side of fernando who um put on this facade as if he's trying to help but in actuality he was what is the word that i'm looking here doing a lot for his own benefit or for something in return okay that's what i'm getting guys that is what i'm getting with these personality cards i'm getting um selfish behavior i'm getting um wearing a mask so let's get into it because i have these other cards here and let's see what else one more they could tell me about him okay because I don't want to assume that I'm going with what ancestors are going, you know, giving me here. And that's what they're giving me. So let's see. Tell me more about Fernando. Tell me more about Fernando Villavicencio. Tell me more about him, ancestors. Look at that first card. I just said it was like he wore a mask of who he truly was. Okay, confirmation. So we have self-love here, harmony, and authenticity. I don't know guys, it's looking like this man um, hid who he truly was and what he truly sent, stood for. Okay? It really, it really does look like that to me. All right, let's, let's see. Let's see one more. Let's see what else we're getting here. And then I'm just going to ask the ancestor straight out. Like, did he wear a mask and pretend to be somebody that he wasn't? Okay. Let's see. Tell me more about Fernando. Tell me more about Fernando. Tell me more about him. What else we need to know about the kind of person he was? He was very outspoken, but he he um, got a lot of no's in his life. He got a lot of no's in his life, and he may have been trying to make something happen, and it, it just wasn't. Yeah, it keeps, look at that, roadblocks. 
barriers, obstacles. I feel like this man needed to really reflect on um, having self-love. And I feel like he used woman as, as an outlet to um, what he thought or was his expression of having self-love was finding love through women. And um, he caused, it says roadblock here. So he caused a blockage within himself of truly loving himself because he never took the time to self-reflect and figure out why it is that he didn't truly love himself. We have the no card here for the saboteur, which is basically saying you have opportunities, but you kind of self-sabotage yourself before you're able to really take these opportunities into effect. Um, and it's talking about sabotaging partnerships, sabotaging um, working with someone in a peaceful manner. He, it seems like he always got into it with other people and they, they would either stand up for themselves and say no, or he would uh, look into partnering up and they would say no. They wouldn't even give him the time of day. You know, with that bridge closed, it looks like, you know, wanting to go meet with some people or someone or a business or company and then going there and they, they won't even let him in. They're like, no, you know, we're not taking any appointments today. OK. And it's, it's voicing, rescuing those in need. But there's a mask under it. So really, it wasn't the authentic, what he was saying wasn't authentic, it wasn't genuine. He was wearing a mask and he was voicing these things out to the media and through public speaking and talking to those who would listen to him and sharing this viewpoint, but this viewpoint wasn't actually, allegedly, it wasn't real. Okay? So I'm going to ask, let's get these cards here. This is not where I expected this to go, but that's what I love about readings is going with an open mind and just seeing what, what happens, what comes out. And I can't control what comes out, guys. I can only interpret what's being said. And from what I see so far, like this man isn't truly who he was portraying himself to be. Okay, let's see. Why was Fernando wearing this mask and making it seem like he was there to help the people when really he was just there for the benefit of what it seems to me of getting an office? Why, why was he doing this? My dog just came in here. He's supposed to be in his tent. He just came in here. So what I get from that is loyalty. He did what he did so he could gain the loyalty of the people. Once you have the loyalty of the people, you can basically do anything that you want. So weird that this worry beads is in reverse um i usually don't do reversal readings but it says they're worry and fear anxiety and literally like my dog just walked in my room and gave me a freaking anxiety attack because i didn't know what the heck that was coming in my room so that is spot on it, it, look at, it, it says flamingos which has the lovers the soulmates the attraction the affection again it goes to um, having that Don Juan attitude where it's it's like a, a magnet where he just gravitates you towards him, you know. Um, it has truth here, justice, balancing of the scales. 
He wanted to be heard out to say, hey, I have the answers. I can help you with this. And to, but this is, he was trying to do it to also release worry and fear and anxiety from people who were stressed out about what was going on at the time or at this time with gang violence and, and drugs, but it was in reverse. So because it was in reverse, it's telling me that's not in actuality what he was trying to accomplish. If y'all hear something, that's my dog. Like, I don't know what the heck he's doing. I don't even know how he got it to, out the tent. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's that's what I'm getting, guys. That is what I'm getting from Fernando. Let me, I'm going to ask now why he was killed. What happened? Um, why was this man killed, ancestors? Why was he killed? There's that mask again. It looks like it was revealed that he was wearing a mask, that he wasn't really um, going to be uh true to his word on what he wanted to accomplish um, for the people. Let me, let me clarify. Why was Fernando killed? Why was Fernando killed? What was the reason? Oh, oh my gosh. Look at this. Look at this family remember i told you guys my dog had came in here and the first thing i thought was loyalty he was lying to the people because he wanted loyalty and i just at, look at the irony of it all because i just asked why was he killed and the first the first word on there what does it say does it not say loyalty okay and if you also see their support system tribe so it, I would say, allegedly, that it was his own people that had this happen to him because they found out that he wasn't being truthful, that his intentions were not they were not authentic. They were not genuine, and that he had been lying to them. What else, ancestors? What else you want to tell me? What else is it you want to tell me? Yeah, a lot of them had hopes once he got into office, he would change things. However, they realized that nothing would change. It would probably just get worse. I got a card that fell. The worry beads again. The worry beads again. What this reminds me of is doing something for a cause. Doing something to help the future. Basically, doing the country a favor is how these people looked at what they did. Two cards came out. Person of air. So it may have been a man and a woman who um, orchestrated this. And look at this, the wheel of karma, the wheel of karma. So for them, it was him receiving his karma. I told you guys, they, it, they felt like uh, a spiritual or, or a religious connotation to this as like, we're just fulfilling our role, fulfilling our purpose in this wheel of karma, a wheel of cause and effect. You see? 
Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Let's see about the people of Ecuador. Let's see what they think about this. What do they think about this death? Um, it seems like a, it was a lot of outrage, but I don't know. Okay, so let's let's ask. Let's do it. How do the people of Ecuador, as a collective, how do they feel about Fernando's passing? How do they feel about his passing? Do they feel like it was justified or an injustice was, was done? They feel like it was due to gangs. You see there, these two girls, they're wearing different colors, right? One has like a reddish uh, plaid shirt. The other one has like a blue plaid shirt, but they're of the same people. They're like the same age, you know, and typically they would be friends. However, they're from different colors. So here they're, they're friends, but in actuality, this represents gangs, right? And so it's saying here, an up unstable person, because if it was upright, this would be an emotionally connected person, intuitive, you know, um, sensitive, heart-centered. But when you have it in reverse, it's, um, it's basically someone who is unstable. So they believe that it's one of the gangs um, who basically not in their right mind just doing things off of vengeance and revenge and um it's look at this the constellation it's like there's a network of them you know what i mean they they're in they're connected with a higher archy and so they have the connections to make these things happen so the people of ecuador really feel like this is from the gangs but that's not what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing is that it was Fernando's own people, allegedly, who um, had this happen. Tell me more. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so the people of Ecuador also feel like um, Fernando was a sacrifice that he died for the cause of stopping violence, um, putting himself first. He's like a martyr to them. I wouldn't be surprised if they have a statue um, in his name or they have an organization in his name or even both, um, as well as a school. There will be different things in this man's name because the, the Ecuadorian people basically feel like he was a martyr. Um, they really feel down because um, they feel like, you know, things are not gonna change. You have the unchanged here. At this, at this time, the situation is stable and unlikely to change. So they're basically looking at the future of Ecuador and they're feeling like it's not gonna change. And then you got the fish hook, which says uh, powerless, feeling helpless. Um, so they really, at this point are aware that their country has issues when it comes to violence, when it comes to drugs. But after this has happened with a person that they assumed or thought to be fighting for the cause, um, now they feel helpless. They feel like, okay, well, what do we do now? We had someone that was going to be put into office in their mind to make a difference. Um, and now he's gone. So... I want to see, um, I want to see what Fernando's life purpose was, because like I said, I don't see him being a genuine person here. So I want to see what was his life purpose? What was he brought on this earth to do, ancestors? What was he, what was his role?
Okay, so he was a person that um, read a lot, uh, believed in education, believed that you can do anything that you put your mind to. And he gave good advice. He gave good advice. Or at least that's what he was brought on this earth to do, was to advise others to get your education. Once you get your education, you'll be able to live the life that you want to live. So that was uh, what typically he was brought on this earth to do. These were his life purposes, at least some of them. And I don't know if he carried them out. Let's, let's ask if he carried out his life purpose. So... Ancestors did Fernando carry out his life purpose with counseling others and being a helping hand, giving them wise advice. But did he carry out his life purpose? Yeah, this is this goes back to what I said that he needed to heal something within himself that he went through um even at a young age where uh, it says inner child healing balance chakras. Okay? And it's under the freedom card. So like I said before, he ran away or did not confront what he needed to confront as far as healing himself from oh, you know, usually when you have Don Juan's at time they felt neglected as a child, possibly from uh, their mother. So he may have felt neglected as a child by his mom. Even in this yoga uh, card, the woman has her back turned. And even though she's centered and very spiritual and maybe religious, she's not paying attention to anyone or anyone else who's around her. And then we have this sapphire here, but it was in reverse. It says, um, wise judgment kindness which is also in the counseling card but it was in reverse so he wasn't exercising this so even though he was brought here to counsel other people and to give them hope um unfortunately he wasn't genuine in doing that we have here victim mentality tunnel vision resist clarity out of touch i mean it goes on and on so um, he, those were, this was his life purpose, but he didn't, um, carry it out. Okay. Um, I want to see, I was going to ask his ancestors what they had to say, but what I really want to do is ask, um, what are the messages for the people of Ecuador? What are the messages for the people of Ecuador? at this time um, okay this card flew out so I'm gonna keep that have courage okay have courage during this time be fearless don't let this bring you down don't let this um, lower your vibration keep having faith and and also take action to to see the change that you want. Let's see, three more cards. Be thankful. So have your altar, give your offerings, go to the ocean, offer to um, the waters, give your offering to the earth. Express your appreciation, your gratitude to Mother Earth. Laugh and have fun laugh and have fun respect your physical body so take care of yourself relax a lot of that has to do as well with not stressing out but bringing yourself back to mother earth back to nature back to grounding not letting this death um, drive you into a place where you have hopelessness. Continue to have hope and have fun and smile and be high vibrational and give thanks, continue to pray and have the courage to speak up. And if you don't have, 
if you don't want to do that, don't feel comfortable speaking speaking up, let's say in public or the media or in crowds or whatnot, you can just speak up through prayer and say exactly what you want for your country and how you want it. Okay. Yeah, we have here connect with past loved ones and awaken your inner shaman. So you guys in Ecuador have all the tools that you need in order to raise your vibration, to elevate, to connect with your spirit guides, your ancestors, and to pray to them and to still um, laugh. To still laugh. There's a lot of red here. It's like there's a lot of passion in your country. There's a lot of pride in your country for the culture. There's a lot of family, a lot of brotherhood in your culture. It's still important for the men and women to come together. Okay. I'm going to do one more. And then we're going to end this reading. Oh, we'll do like a... Okay, keepers of light want to come through too. So let's see. What is a practice that the Ecuadorian people can do at this time? Do your best. All you can do is do your best. We are all doing our best with the understanding and awareness we have in this moment. Any decision I take is okay. No matter the outcome, I make the best of any situation and learn as I go along. Bottom of the deck, we have hold lightly. I take the things and people that come into my life lightly. Not holding on too tight so that when it comes time for them to, to go, in the case of Fernando, they may go smoothly. This does not mean I love any less, but that I am open to the changes of life. So it is okay to let Fernando go because at the end of the day, things are constantly changing. And the way that I see it is that our souls choose how we're coming in, how we're going out. And you have had the opportunity to interact with this man or watch this man and um, hear what he had to say to the people. And even though he's gone, it's, it's a part of life. And even though it may hurt at this time, um, don't hold on too tightly. Just have faith, have hope, and keep being positive that everything will be okay. All you can do is do your best with the understanding that you have at this time, with what you know in this time. There is no right or wrong decision. So continue to do the best you can to elevate yourself, to keep things moving and flowing in your life, no matter what's going on around you. Okay, now let's see what the Keepers of Light want to say, and then we'll close the reading. Keepers of Light, which of you have a message for the people of Ecuador? Keepers of Light, which of you have a message for the people of Ecuador? Oh, hold on. Who is this? Okay, we got Serapis Bay. All right. All right, it says the stars, this is the message for the people of Ecuador. It says the stars cannot shine without darkness. You may have experienced a low state of being, trauma or depression, but this is a new beginning. Become aware of growth. There is always room for improvement. There's also a sense of presentation now. You may be receiving documentation or certification to acknowledge your growth or experience. So there may be some paperwork down the road that Ecuador receives as a way to show their unified country. 
It's important to cherish this time and to realize that without the challenges or obstacles you have faced, you wouldn't be as strong, powerful, or focused as you are today. You are ascending personally and spiritually at this time, and the universe is here to support it. The universe is here to support it. You are ascending personally and spiritually at this time, and the universe is here to support it. It's important to cherish this time and to realize that without the challenges or obstacles you have faced, you wouldn't be as strong, powerful, or focused as you are today, okay? And that's the message for the Ecuadorian people. My love goes to all of you during this time continue to pray and have hope and that's the reading until next time guys it's my goddess Chrissy don't forget to like comment share subscribe but above all if you don't do anything else if you don't comment if you don't share subscribe all right love you all till next time my goddess Chrissy bye